We often talk about Linux power users. What exactly is a power user? Well, I think a lot of people, when they think of power user, they think somebody that is comfortable at the command line, somebody that knows a lot of the GNU core utils, a lot of those basic command line utilities, and somebody that is comfortable at least doing some basic scripting. And I think one of the keys to transitioning from a Linux noob to a power user is really learning three of the most important command line utilities, and those are grip, sed, awk. Now, if you want to learn grip, sed, and awk, you probably should read the man page for each of these commands, but the man pages are kind of lengthy, especially for sed and awk, because they're such powerful commands. They can do so much stuff. Uh, they're very lengthy man pages, but honestly, you don't need to know everything that these commands can do. 99 times out of 100, when I'm using grip, sed, and awk, I'm going to do one of the handful of commands for each that I'm going to show you today on camera. And that's the point of today's video is I just want to show you the most common use cases for grip, set, and all things that I use all the time in my workflow. And I think you'll use all the time too, because honestly, if you just follow along with me in a terminal, you practice with me on this video, just run the commands that I'm running, you know, type them in a terminal, you do that a couple of times, you'll learn these things and you'll start using them all the time. You'll start using grip, sed, and all, all the time. And all of a sudden, that transition from noob to power user starts taking shape. Let me switch over to my terminal and let's first talk about grip. What is grip? Well, grip is a search utility. It searches for a string of text. So you give it a string and it searches for lines that match that string that you give it. For example, if I want to grip my name, which is Derek, if I can spell it correctly, in my dot bash RC, there is one line in my dot bash RC that contains the string Derek. And I would say 90% of the time that you use grip, that is exactly how you use it. You give grip a string and it's going to return the lines that you were looking for in that file. If I grip alias, it's going to return all the lines in my dot bash RC that included the string alias. Now, the other thing you sometimes want to do is you want all the lines that do not include the string that you give it. So you do an inverse grip. Inverse is done with the dash V flag. So grip dash V alias on my dot bash RC returns all the lines that do not include the string alias. Now, if you want to have some context around these lines that get returned, for example, if I want to do, uh, let's search for Derek again. You know, it just returns the one line, right? The, the single line in my dot bash RC that contains Derek. But you can actually have some context around it by doing either dash capital A or dash capital B or dash capital C. Now, what dash capital A is, this is after context, then give it a number, let's say three lines, for example. So dash capital A three Derek on the dot bash RC. It's going to print the line that includes Derek, and then it will also print the next three lines after it to give me some context around that line. So there is the output from that. And if I up arrow and change dash A to dash B, capital B, for before context, this will print the line that includes Derek plus the three lines before it. Now, in this case, there's not three lines before it because this was actually line two of the config, but it did print the line that was right before it. And if you wanted context both before and after, you would do capital C for context, and this will print three lines before it and three lines after it. Speaking personally, one of my favorite grip commands is grip dash capital I lowercase r lowercase l. What this is, is you do this on a string and then you give it a path to a directory. And what this will do is it will print all of the file names in that directory and any subdirectories because it's a recursive search because I gave it dash R. It's going to give me a list of all the files that had lines in their files that contained that string. This is really neat when you're, for example, if you're a programmer or you know a dev and you clone a repository and you know there's some files that contain a certain string that you're looking for, you know, when you want to examine the files that contain that particular string, you know, grip dash capital I lowercase rl is the command you're looking for. Now, if you want to see this in action, let me give it a real string. I'll search for Derek again because I know my first name is in so many files on my system. And I'll go ahead and search my dot config directory Directory. My dot config directory is very large. Let's narrow it down to my dot config slash emacs directory. And if I do that, it's going to list all the files that contained my first name. So there's a lot of files in my emacs directory that actually had a line containing the string Derek. Now, an example, you know, if I cloned a repository of somebody's 
script or program or whatever and I was looking for a string many times for example let's imagine I clone a repository of somebody's I don't know Arch Linux post installation script similar to my DTOS script or something you know a lot of times if they're doing this sort of thing if they're doing actual installation script they probably have to create a user at some point maybe I want to find the line that includes the command user add or add user whatever command they're using to actually add a user on the system and then you know path to the directory and then it would give me the file or files that contained the user add command somewhere so grep dash IRL just learn it you're gonna love it it's gonna be something that you use all the time once you discover it now I actually should explain the flags in this before I move on dash I this is very important you always want to add this dash capital I flag to this recursive um, search for files that contain a string and this is because this tells grep to ignore binary files because a binary file is it's pointless, you know, searching for strings in a binary file that that's not what you're really looking for. But grip is going to waste a lot of time searching through binaries on the system, especially if they're large binary files, like maybe you've got ISO files in that directory. For example, ISO image is really just a binary, but you're not wanting to search for strings of text in an ISO file, right? You, you can't do that. So just tell grip to ignore all that stuff. Otherwise, you know, if you run a, a grip IRL in a directory that contains some large binaries, the command is going Going to run extremely slow because grip is wasting time searching through files that really are kind of pointless to search through and the other two flags are pretty obvious R again is that recursive search so search through the directory I give you plus all of its subdirectories L means instead of giving me the lines of text that contain the string give me the file names instead so that's what the L flag is doing so let's move on to Sid now Sid is another you know very powerful command but it's so easy you know to use once you learn uh, said is it's not complicated what said how it's typically used is you run some kind of command and a command that produces some terminal output and then you pipe that into said and then do two single quotes inside the single quotes do s slash the old string that you want to replace slash the new string you want to replace it with slash and then G for a global substitution meaning don't do it just one time you know the first instance where you find the string old uh, make sure you change every instance of old to new and what this is this is called a said substitution that's what the S is doing here in the front and that's typically you know for me 95% of the time I'm doing something with said I'm doing a said substitution that's typically what said is used for for example let me go ahead and cancel that command let's do the head of my bash rc well i misspelled head but let's head bash rc so what this is the head is the first 10 lines and now let me up arrow so that's the command right that produced some output in the terminal now let me pipe that into said and once again let's do a said substitution now i'm going to search for the string derek because i know it's in there and we're going to change that to how about dirk we're going to change my first name. If I hit enter, you can see Derek has now been transformed to Dirk, at least in the output of the terminal. Now, we haven't done anything to my dot bash RC, right? We haven't overwritten anything. This is just terminal output here. If I want to actually have it right to the file, what I would do is I would do a sid. And then once again, let's do S slash Derek slash Dirk slash G and then give it the path to my dot bash RC itself. Before all of this, I need to tag on this flag, dash I. So this dash I is going to do an in place change, right? So it's actually going to write to the file. So if I hit enter on that, I just wrote to my bash RC. If I do a head on my dot bash RC, you can see the file has actually changed, right? Now I don't actually want that change. So I'm going to up arrow and I'm going to do a said substitution again. This time let's change Dirk back to Derek and hit the dot bash RC and you can see it changed that line back for me and I'm sure you can see how said could just be a really powerful command because sometimes you need to change a lot of lines of text in a file uh, a lot of instances of a particular string to another string and it would be really tedious if you had to go through with just your text editor and you know change each instance you know one at a time that could take hours or even days to do where a command like said could change thousands of instances of a string to something else 
just like that. And I would say 99% of the time, easily 99% of the time I use SID, I'm doing a SID substitution. Occasionally, you might also use SID to print lines of text. For example, if I did SID dash N and then inside single quotes do 1P on my dot bash RC, I'm telling SID to print line one. So not much to it. And you might say, well, couldn't you just do that with head dash N one on the dot bash RC? Yes, you could. But the thing with SID is I can give SID a range here. So instead of one, I could give it one comma five. And now it prints the range of line one through five, or I could have done lines five through 20, whatever the range happens to be that I'm wanting. So SID is a really neat way to um, basically print out lines of text to the terminal, very similar to CAD or to HID. But you know, if you have a specific range in mind, SID N is what you're looking for. Now let me clear the terminal. The next command that you really need to know is awk. Now awk is a very deep rabbit hole because awk is really a programming language that can do practically anything you can imagine. And I would say about 90% of the time when I use an alt command, I'm doing it in this form. So I'm going to do alt and then inside single quotes, inside braces, I'm going to tell alt to print a column. For example, print dollar sign one, print the first column and the columns are delineated by spaces in a file. So in this case, if I use the dot bash RC, you know, it's going to print the first word of every line. So that is printing the first field. If you want to print more than one field, feel free to do that. For example, I could print field one and field two, but if you do that, you can see it's actually just going to concatenate them together, right? There's no space between them because, you know, you need to actually specify inside double quotes here, a space between dollar sign one and dollar sign two. So now it prints the first and second fields, or actually in this case, since it's a, just my badge RC first and second words of this document. Now let's imagine that I want to get the first field of my dot bash RC again, but this time I only want the first field from the line that contains a certain string. Well, of course you could do this with pipes. I could actually grip for Derek on the dot bash RC and then pipe that into awk and tell awk to print the first column. If I did that, the first field for the line that contains the string Derek is actually a comment, uh, a hashtag, a, a pound symbol, right? But there's no reason to use both grip and awk. You don't have to grip first and then pipe it into awk. What I could do is I could tell awk, print the first field of my dot bash RC, but search for the string Derek. So what I'll do is inside the single quotes and then inside slashes, the string I'm searching for. I'm searching for Derek and then the braces print dollar sign, print the first field. And you see, I get the same output. If I wanted to up arrow and maybe print the fourth field, you can see that's the fourth field. I'm looking for Derek, print the fifth field, <laughs> not my name either, print the sixth field. Are we going to get to the, the string? Yes. So it's the, the sixth column is actually where my name appears on that line. Now, one other thing you will sometimes have to do with awk is tell it to use a different field separator than spaces. By default, it defaults to spaces as the field separator. But if you want to use the colon as a field separator, for example, maybe it's a file that has colons as a separator, or maybe it's a comma separated value file, you know, a CSV file, you'd tell it, hey, you know, I'm using commas as the separator. That way it pulls out the columns based on where the commas are. And if you want to see a file like this in action, let me cat my slash etsy slash passwd file. This particular file is a standard on Linux systems. Passwd contains all your user information. So your usernames, their IDs, their default home directory, their default shell, and all the fields in this file are separated by a colon. So I would have to tell awk in this case, dash elf colon, use the colons as field separators, and now print the first field. And now I get a list of the usernames on the system because that was the first field in that file. Now, what if I want to search for a specific string? Again, dash F for the colon as the field separator, print the first field, but again, let's search for a string. So do the two slashes and let's search for the string DT because I know the user DT is in this file and it prints the first column of the line that contains DT, which the first column is the actual username DT. If I wanted his shill, now in the passwd file, the very last column is the user shill. So NF is actually what is used for the last column. And you can see slash bin slash fish is returned because DT's uh, default user shell is 
the fish shell. And when you're playing around with these commands, don't be afraid to pipe them into each other. For example, if I wanted to print the first and second columns of my slash etsy slash net config, which is a standard Linux config file that's on your system. For example, that is the first two columns of that file. But honestly, let's imagine I only want these lines. I don't want the commented lines, the ones that begin with the hash symbol. Now, how would you do that? Well, if you've been following along with the video, you probably can think of at least two ways to eliminate all the lines that begin with the hashtag, the, the pound symbol. If I up arrow, one thing you could do is do an inverse grip. Let's grip dash V for inverse grip. And what we want to do is we want to eliminate all the lines that begin with the hash symbol. So first we do a caret symbol and then the hash symbol. So what the caret symbol is, that delineates the beginning of a line. So do an inverse grip for every line that has the hash symbol at the very beginning of the line. If I hit enter on that, you see we eliminated all of these commented lines now, right? So now we get the results that we want. And now, of course, that's very easy with the magic of piping. Now, could you do all that with simply awk? Yes, you could, because we've already discussed that awk can search for a string of text. So let's awk for caret symbol hashtag. Now, if I hit enter on this, this is actually going to return the lines that contain the hashtag. So what we want to do is we want to tell it every line that does not contain that string we're searching for. So do the exclamation before the uh, first slash. So every line that does not contain that string, if I hit enter on that, then we get the same results as we would have had we uh, done the previous command where we piped it into grip. And which one you use, I, it really doesn't matter when you're doing things at the terminal. The main thing is you get the information return that you're looking for. Now, if you're scripting, you may want to do all of this as an alt command rather than having alt then piping it into grip because it's a little easier to read if you can you know make the code a little smaller everything's kind of on one line using one program it might be easier for people that are viewing your script later you know it might be easier for them to digest but when i'm doing things interactively at the command line i am not afraid to string a whole bunch of grip set alts together even if i could do them all with in just one alt command or one said command whatever it happens to be i don't mind you know tacking on you know this said command right now which is a said substitution and i'm going to substitute all the spaces in this output and i'm going to substitute it for space xxx space so what this is going to do the spaces between these two columns i want you to replace it with space xxx space if i hit enter you can see that is the result. So that would be a very neat way to insert an extra column in the output. You know, if you were missing a certain column and you wanted that column on each line to actually be the same string, you know, you, you could achieve that effect by piping that alt command into a said command. And again, you can just keep piping. So I'll grip for the string ORD. And now I only get the lines that contain the string ORD. Now if I up arrow, maybe I only want the head dash in the first three lines of that output, right? You just keep stringing these pipes together. And that is essentially like 99% of the time I use grip, set, and awk. I use them in the fashion I showed today on camera. And this is not hard. Nothing I showed on camera today is going to be something that you can't learn in about five minutes and remember for the rest of your life. So if you're a new user to Linux, or maybe you're just a novice when it comes to the command line and the shell utilities, you know, this stuff is not that difficult. And once you start playing with it, you'll love it. You'll use it all the time because you'll discover things that are just absolutely magical that you, you never even dreamed that you could do at the command line. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe James, Matt, Paul, Steve, Wes, Arcotic, Armor, Dragon, Commander, Ingrid, Darloff, George, Lee, Matthew, Methos, Nate, Erjan, Paul, Peace, Arshan, Vodora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astri, Tenrin, Tools, Devler, War, Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at Grip Set Alt for noobs, it wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and these great command line utilities, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.